OG Ananobi, you are a New York Knick. The New York Knicks have traded for OG Ananobi following the loss last night to the Orlando Magic. The Knicks will be trading two players that I know are fan favorites. RJ Barrett and Emmanuel Quickly have been traded to the Toronto Raptors. But you get back OG Ananobi, a player that the Knicks have coveted for a long, long time. Adrian Wojnarowski says this, the Toronto Raptors are finalizing a trade to send OG Ananobi to the Knicks for a package that includes R.J. Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, and draft considerations. And when that news broke just about 20, 30 minutes ago, I was like, oh my goodness, how many first-round picks are the Knicks going to have to give up to get OG Ananobi? Zero. The Knicks traded zero first-round picks. Say it with me. The Knicks traded zero first-round picks. They traded a second-round pick! They still have all their first-round picks. Another trade is coming. Full trade deal details. R.J. Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, they are going to Toronto, while O.G. Anobi, Precious Achua, and Malachi Flynn are heading to be the newest members of the New York Knicks. Does this trade make the Knicks finals contenders? I would say no. Does this trade make the New York Knicks better? Absolutely. Did the New York Knicks win this trade? Yes. It is not even close. Does it suck that you gave up Emmanuel quickly? Yeah, he's going to be really good for a really long time for the Toronto Raptors. But you got the best player in this deal. You got off potentially one of the worst contracts in the NBA in R.J. Barrett, year one of a four-year $107 million deal, and you got to hold on to all of your first-round picks. The Knicks made a hell of a move today. The Knicks got better. Is it sad? Is it the end of an era? Absolutely. I understand why anyone would feel that way. But the sun will come up tomorrow, and the Knicks are a better basketball team than they were just 28 minutes ago. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. We just crossed over 30,000 subscribers, and I've made a deal to you. When the Knicks make a move, we make a video. So subscribe to the channel, Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. Free Knicks content, 365 days a year. 366 coming up in 2024 because it is a leap year. Woj also said this, which is important when discussing and dissecting this OG Ananobi trade. New York has been pursuing Ananobi for a significant period of time and now gets a head start on recruiting him to stay as a free agent this summer. Ananobi's two-way talent has made him a target throughout the league, and now he lands in the Knicks lineup. First part's the most important. OG Ananobi can't be a free agent this summer. But if you believe that the Knicks traded for OG and Anobi without the idea that they could sign him in free agency, you're wrong. You know how I know that? Because he's a member of CAA. And if you don't think there's some sort of tampering or at least a conversation, a.k.a. OG and Anobi's agent going up to him being like, hey, if the Knicks trade for you and give you a four-year, $130 million contract, are you going to take it? And he says yes, deal done. OG and Anobi will not just be a member of the Knicks this year. He will be a member of the Knicks for the foreseeable future. He will sign a contract extension in free agency and remain a part of this ball club. Tim Bontemps, who works for ESPN, says, presuming the deal is done by then, Ananobi's debut could be as soon as Monday at Madison Square Garden against the top team in the West, the Minnesota Timberwolves. So there you get your first look at it. OG Ananobi could make his Knicks debut this Monday against the Timberwolves. Who is OG Ananobi as a player? Let's break that down. Is he a star? Mm, no, definitely not a superstar, but he is one of the best role players in the NBA. And I feel like calling him a role player doesn't give him kind of the credit that he deserves. He is one of the best connector pieces in the league. He makes any team he is on better. Do the stats pop off the screen? No. 15 points per game, four, four rebounds so far this year, two, two and a half assists. But it's the efficiency, it's the effectiveness, and it's the winning brand of basketball that he plays that a lot of New York Knicks fans are going to fall in love with. He's shooting 49% from the field this year. He's an extremely efficient scorer. He plays within the flow of the offense. And he's shooting 37.4% from three on six attempts. The Knicks now have another elite three-point shooter in their lineup in a lineup that features Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle, two of the most double-team players in the NBA. Look at some stats from last year. 
Only 27 games played this year. Not a big enough sample size to draw a full picture. So let's talk about last year. His numbers for OG Ananobi. A little bit of some advanced stats. I hate that term, but it's what they are. His catch and shoot three-point percentage last year, 40.6%. One of the best in the NBA. He's shooting 38.8% on catch and shoot three-pointers this year. So there's consistency there. He's good also from the foul line down. 10 feet or less from the cup. He converts on 57.1% of his attempts. But what I love about him is he can camp out in that corner. And he's not just a Reggie Bullock. He's not just a corner boy. He can catch. He can rip through. He can get to the bucket. He's got a little bit of a face-up mid-range game. He can play with his back to the basket. Last year, 46-plus percent from the left corner and 42.9 percent from the right corner. This year, he is shooting from the left corner three, 50 percent. He's 21 of 42 from the left corner this year, and he's 10 of 28 from the right corner, 35.7 percent. He's shooting 55 percent from mid-range this year. He averages about one a game in the paint. Numbers are a little bit low in the non-restricted area. 31.4 percent has to be better in that area, but in the restricted area, 73 percent. He's six foot eight, six foot seven, 230 pounds, seven foot wingspan. It's a great get for our New York Knicks. What's your one word reaction? to the trade. I know there's a lot of emotions from Knicks fans coming out, and that's what I love about Knicks fans. We're passionate, we care, and we love this team probably more than we all should. But give me your one-word reaction to the trade, because I know some people are upset that Emmanuel quickly, and for some reason, R.J. Barrett are gone, but the Knicks won this trade. They got the best player in the deal. They got off the worst contract, and they held on to all of their first-round picks. Give me your one-word reaction to the deal down in the comment section right now. We're going to break this trade down Coming up a little bit more, and maybe some potential trade targets for the Knicks. But first, I got to give a huge huge shout out to today's sponsor, Factor. When you go to factormeals.com slash KnicksChat50, use the promo code KnicksChat50, Factor will give you 50% off your first order. If you're a guy like me or a lady that uh, doesn't like going to the grocery store and you like having your meals ready to heat up in just two minutes, fresh, never frozen, frozen dietitian approved, Chef prepared meals get hooked up with Factor. I'm a huge fan of them. One, because I stay on track with my fitness goals when I get eat Factor. I also need to save myself some money because I save 50% off. I love the smoothies that they have. They have breakfast, they have lunch, they have dinner, fresh, never frozen. I'm a guy that needs to eat fresh food, and Factor hooks me up. Pick your pre made meals that are prepped and cooked to perfection. All you do is heat them up, eat them. And then you enjoy them because they love, the taste is amazing. It's factormeals.com slash NicksChat50. Make sure to use that promo code NicksChat50 to save 50% off. So obviously with this trade for the New York Knicks, their bench has become um, somewhat of a question mark because obviously you are trading a guy like Emmanuel Quickly, who is one of the best six men in the league. Should have won six man of the year last year over Malcolm Brogdon. And he's also a super sub in the sense that when he comes in the game, he changes it. But also, he could start for the Knicks. Started over 20 games last year, whether it was injuries to Grimes or quickly, excuse me, Grimes Brunson or R.J. Barrett. So you're going to need a guy like Precious Achua or potentially Malachi Flynn to play some basketball for you. I believe this is going to be the starting lineup for the New York Knicks. You got Jalen Brunson, obviously, man in that point guard spot. I believe his Villanova teammate, Dante DiVincenzo, should stay at that two-guard spot alongside of him. DiVincenzo is one of the best catch-and-shoot three-point guys in the league, and since he's entered the starting lineup, he knocks it down at about a 50% clip. I believe he stretches the offense out, and it's going to help a guy like Brunson and Randall attack the rim. Got OG at that small forward spot. Obviously, Mitchell Robinson is hurt, so you have Hart and Sign at the five and Randall at the four. What do you got off the bench now? You don't really have a great backup point guard. Let's call a spade a spade. Malachi Flynn is just okay, if not below average. And Mal uh, Malcolm McBride, Deuce McBride is Deuce. We know what he is. At the two guard, you got Grimes and Ryan Archie Diacono. You still got Josh Hart coming off the bench at that small forward position. Hart is no longer your backup four because I believe OG Ananobi is also your backup four. You can play that spot. You got Precious Achua, Taj Gibson, and when Jericho Sims comes back from injury, that will be your rotation of big men. Let's talk about Precious Achua here for a little bit. He's a solid player, not a guy that's going to come in and change the game for you. He's had some good games this year, December 20th versus the Nuggets in 25 minutes, had 13 points, five rebounds, six for 10 from the field, one of two.
from downtown. The three-point percentage is well below league average, but he's not afraid to shoot him. He's shooting two threes a night. A little bit undersized at six foot eight, 230 pounds, um, but he's someone that's athletic. He'll be able to catch some lobs. He'll be a good pick-and-roll player for some of the Knicks guards. And let's just be honest, he's better than Taj Gibson, and the Knicks need to do something right there. Malachi Flynn has been somewhat of a disappointment through he came into the NBA. Smaller guard, six foot one, uh, not the most efficient player by any stretch of the imagination. 40% from the field this year in 31 games, 35% from three. But the Knicks are going to need him to play some minutes unless they make another move at that backup guard spot. Uh, maybe Deuce McBride is the guy that's going to play a couple more minutes. You take a look at this trade one more time. I want to. I want. Let's let's ask him to grade the trade, Roly. Just because I feel like a lot of people are upset at this trade, and you know what? I could be. On, I could understand why, but for me, I'm going to grade this trade a B. This is a B to a B plus for me. Is it a home run? No, um, but I think it makes the Knicks better than they were yesterday. It fills a need that they have in the sense of they allowed. And they're not bad players. They're actually really, really good players. Taliban Carroll and Franz Wagner went for 61 points last night. Jalen Williams and SGA combined for 70 points two nights ago. Grade the trade for me, A, B, C, D, or F. Um, three reasons I like this trade the most. You got the best player in the deal. You got off of an awful contract. And you didn't give up any future draft capital. I know Knicks fans are sad. They're Prince. Their guy, the star J, Broadway Barrett, is no longer a member of the Knicks. And it's going to be weird seeing R.J. Barrett play for the Toronto Raptors. But he just didn't play well enough this year. Hasn't been consistent enough in his career. And let's just boil it down to this. The Knicks' best players are Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle. Really good offensive players. Not good defensive players. So what do you need to mask those two guys' defensive deficiencies? You needed an elite wing defender. R.J. Barrett simply is just not that guy. In his last 19 games, he's shooting 39% from the field and 25% from downtown. I believe he's going to have a good career in this league. He was just never going to help the Knicks be a championship contender, unfortunately. The guy that I am most sad about seeing going is Emmanuel Quickly. I think Emmanuel Quickly is one of the most underrated players in the NBA. Um, were the Knicks going to pay him the money that he wanted? They didn't come to a deal. Uh, they didn't come to an agreement prior to the season. So he's fought a one-year deal. He's going to be a restricted free agent. They had the opportunity to match anything. I think this tells you what they thought about what his market was and what they were willing to pay. He's going to leave big holes shoes to fill because the Knicks don't have backup point guard. I mean, shoot, if Jalen Brunson gets hurt and has to miss a game, they could be in a load of trouble. So they got to get better. Got to get better in that backcourt when it comes uh, to that. <sighs> Another reason I love this trade, though. You didn't trade any of this. You didn't trade any of this. And what does that mean? You still got $18 million expiring in Evan Fournier. You still got a young player that I think is coveted across the league in Quentin Grimes. What does Fournier, Grimes, and two unprotected first-round picks get you? I can get you a pretty good player. Four first-round picks in 2024, two in 2025, eight tradable first-round picks. Ten first-rounders in the next seven years. You could trade all your first-round picks. You still got some picks to make. I'm a fan. I am. I am a fan of this trade for the New York Knicks. Look, if you made it this far in the video, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. We're trying to get to 31,000 subscribers. Free Knicks content every day. So sub for Knicks, dubs. Uh, I see some people in the chat right now. Is OG going to play tonight? No. OG is not going to play tonight for the New York Knicks. I would expect him to be ready to go Monday night versus the Minnesota Timberwolves. If you haven't yet, make sure you are following me over on Twitter. That was the first place you would have heard about this news as I uh, tweeted out the news as soon as it broke. So if you're looking for another way to continue the conversation and another way to stay up to date on the latest Knicks news and rumors, give me a follow over on Twitter at MarshallGreen underscore.